Hey guys, welcome to our new video. Here's a scenario. Say you own a couple of years old hardware that still works as you expected. But you know it's not the latest and greatest and it will not run Windows 11. So you're looking for an alternative. Your hardware is still decent enough though and you don't want to wait for the Windows 10 end of support. You're thinking about switching to Linux, but all the information you found on the internet simply overwhelms you. So many different distros desktop environments, window managers, and other choices. What to choose? Debian base or Arch base? Let's deal with it. It's the general conception that Debian and distros based upon Debian provide stability and reliability, but at the same time, users generally pay the price by having all their software at their disposal. On the other hand, it is thought that Arch and Arch-based distros provide cutting-edge software, but at the expense of instability and frequent system breakages. But the picture is not that black or white, and rather, there are many shades of grey. Let's take an example. Here's Linux Mint Debian Edition, or LMDE, as it is known. At the moment, it's version 4 and is based on Debian 10. It's true, with this operating system based on the current Debian version, you get an older Linux kernel, and it is kernel 4.19. For comparison, Linux 5.13 kernel has been released as of the time of recording this video. Also, apps in the Debian repositories are already quite old. For instance, while Firefox is version 89 at the time of recording the video, in LMDE4 it's ESR 78.11, where ESR stands for Extend Support Release. If you happen to be a new Linux user, just so you know, the point of having the old software is to have a stable, well-tested system that is almost impossible to break. But things are not anymore as they used to be. Now, even in the Debian-based distros world, you can have the latest software via the Flatpak platform, as is the case with LMD4. Yes, even Firefox. You can install the latest version distributed as Flatpak, so if you need a stable, not changing base system, but updated applications, you can have it. In addition to that, the desktop environment itself in LMDE is regularly updated, so it turns out that the Debian-based Linux Mint is actually a semi-rolling Linux distribution. While Debian is said not to be user-friendly, particularly for new Linux users, it's not the case with Debian-based distros like LMDE. Should you want to install multimedia codecs, you can easily do it in LMDE, while in some basic distros it's not a so-called one-click install. To install any app, it's a one-click affair. LMDE Software Manager is the same as the one in Linux Mint proper. You can forget about the command line and terminal. LMDE, with its Cinnamon desktop environment, offers a familiar desktop layout and workflow. Former Windows users will particularly find it easy to work with and they will be able to adapt to the new system from the get-go. Or if you, like many other Linux users, don't like default look and feel and want to change it, in LMD4 it's an easy task and you can change the looks to your liking. Is it so easy in Debian itself? Look for the answer in one of our previous videos. When it comes to Arch and Arch-based distros, it's been a general conception that they're not beginner-friendly and that frequent upgrades break the system from time to time. So that's why we installed in Manjaro a very popular Arch-based distro, just to check if it's true about the system breakages. To be honest with you, we did have issues with the Manjaro XFCE edition earlier, and Manjaro KDE refused to install for us at all. But Manjaro GNOME has been working brilliantly for us for several weeks now and no update whatsoever broke our build. 
The Linux kernel in Manjaro wasn't the latest one as of the time of recording the video, but the kernel 5.10.41-1 was quite newer compared to LMD's one anyway. Apps in Manjaro are updated and almost the latest versions, and you have several options. In Manjaro's Pemac software manager, you can install apps from repositories, then from Flatpak or Snap platforms, and of course, you can enable AUR or Arch user repository support, which means that you have access to any program you can think of. Yeah, Firefox's version 89.0.2. It's the latest one at the time of recording the video. The GNOME desktop environment in Manjaro is from the 40 series, meaning the new version of GNOME. In addition to that, if you happen to be a newcomer to Linux, you shouldn't find GNOME desktop environment too strange if you have ever used an Android phone, because their workflow is strikingly similar in our view. Still. To change the default in Manjaro when it comes to look and feel is as easy as it gets, thanks to its layout app. It's something like the Zorin appearance app, and there you can change the way your desktop works. And of course, you can switch to the dark theme. In the Tweaks app, you can also change your themes, icons and wallpapers. Additionally, bearing in mind that Ubuntu is based upon Debian, so if you take Ubuntu and Ubuntu-based distributions into account, such as Zorinoise for instance, then you'll get a pre-configured, familiar computing experience that shines in all departments. Functionality, workflow, user experience, look and feel, software availability and so on. Zorin OS, similarly to many other Ubuntu-based distributions, is based on Ubuntu's long-term support version. It means that with Zorin OS you get a rock-solid base with a slightly older and heavily customized GNOME desktop environment. It's ideal for users looking for a distraction-free operating system that just works. So to answer the main question of the video, which way to go, Arch base or Debian base? Well, it all really depends on your personal preference and need, basically. If you are after an operating system that does not change that often, keeping the base and its apps more or less the same throughout the time, with there ever the same functionality, then you should follow a Debian route. Otherwise, if you are of an adventurous spirit, you like to tinker, and you have time and energy for it, and you like new versions of your operating system and apps, then Arch-based distributions are for you. Still, if you are undecided about what to choose, then you should go after Solus. It's an excellent Linux distribution that is not based neither on Debian nor on Arch. To check out Solus OS, watch one of our previous videos. What do you think? What way should new Linux users go? Arch based or Debian based? Tell us in the comment section down below. We hope you've liked the video. Don't forget to give us your likes or dislikes and please subscribe to our channel if you haven't done it already. Thanks for watching and see you next time!